Hello everybody and welcome back to another modern gameplay video. Today we're playing a Naya Ephemerate Blink deck that the user, I'm going to butcher this, just letting you know, Chechito took to a 5-0 finish in an MTGO Modern League. So this deck's based around Ephemerate, hence the name of the deck. It's a Blink card. And uh, it's kind of like any other typical Blink deck you would imagine, except the reason this one was made is all because of this brand new card called Skyclave Apparition from Zendikar Rising that we've been playing a lot lately on the channel and it's been awesome every time we tried it out. And so it's gonna be super awesome once you pair it with Blink cards. So for example, Ephemerate. So Skyclave is going to exile non-land permanent when it enters. And then you're going to ephemerate blink this thing. They're going to get a token. The Skyclave is going to re-enter. You're going to eat that token. And then when it goes to your upkeep, you're going to rebound the ephemerate and then eat another non-land permanent. So if all checks out, it's basically turns into ephemerate being one mana, instant speed, exile target permanent. And if you are using ephemerate to phase a removal spell and also get full value, it basically turns it into one mana, instant speed, counter target spell, exile target permanent. That value can be nuts. And it's very similar to this whenever you flicker a Skyclave Apparition via Restoration Angel or Flicker Wisp. More things we can blink are Flicker Wisp, Blade Splicer, and uh, walls like Wall of Omens, Wall of Blossoms, all of which can be hit off of Collected Company. This is a Naya Collected Company deck, even more good value against control and stuff like that. And we got one more little goodie in here called Chroma Angel of Fury, or Wrath, or whatever it's called. So if you've never seen a Blink deck before, um, this is gonna be a treat. So you can morph the Chroma. If you happen to Blink that morph via Ephemerate, Flicker Wisp, or Restoration Angel, you then get the big fat mama angel Chroma herself on the front side. So that's a cool little synergy right there. So this deck has a lot of cool little ins and outs of it, and hopefully we can show all of those off because it's sweet. It's gonna be a grind. Every time we ever go up against a Soul Herder Blink deck, it's always like an hour long match. So I apologize in advance if this video doesn't have a ton of matches in it, but I'll try to see what I can do. So let's do it. And shout out to our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders for all of your Magic the Gathering needs. If you'd like to try today's deck out in paper, consider purchasing through our deck list link down below. That's our TCG Player link and anything you purchase through there really helps out the channel. It is the number one place on the internet to buy Magic the Gathering singles. And if you'd like to try today's deck out on Magic Online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code MarinMoon to save 15% off and you can rent today's deck and play along with us. They're the most trusted and reliable Magic Online card rental service. It is what I personally use and how I do so much MTGO content for YouTube. And shout outs to our supporters over on Patreon. Their names have been scrolling down below. It is because of you guys this channel is possible. So thank you very much for your support. If you would like to become a patron as well, the link is down below. And with that, let's jump right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. All right, we are live here on Twitch. Got our deck freshly rented out courtesy of Mana Traders. This is some Naya Blink. First deck complaint today for the super long stream because I know this one is going to be a grind. Blink decks absolutely just grind for eternity. It takes like an hour to win. Hopefully that won't be the case. We're going to find out. So we went over like a lot of it in the intro already. Ephemerate, uh, Resto, and Flicker Wisp for our Blink cards. And we can Blink things like these walls early game to like Cantrip. And then Blade Splicer to get a bunch of uh, yeah. Golems. And then uh, Flicker Wisp. Blinking Flicker Wisp himself can like remove your opponent's permanence for a single turn. Skyclave Apparition, good for exile and stuff. And then Eternal Witness to get stuff back. Uh, Coco, we got six total mana dorks, and then we got one of Revel Arc. We already went over Rokoma as well. One of Revel Arc is when you blink it, you can just start reanimating things to power two or less. But I've never, ever, ever seen Revel Arc used for what it's meant for. I've only ever seen this card used for a combo like Bubble Hulk or Boon Weaver Giant combo. Um, but I've never, like, I've seen it in so many lists throughout the years in, like, a singleton and, like, Kiki Jiki decks and whatnot, but I've never seen it do what it was supposed to. So hopefully we can get that to work. Sideboard. We got some paths for removal, rip for the grave. Ariok Champion is anti-shadow burn. And then, uh, Eidolon, so that Storm doesn't go off. And, uh, Belcher and stuff like that. Gaia's Blessing and Kozilek, singleton of each to hate out Mill, because there's a lot of Mill right now. And then uh, Night of Autumn is a naturalized effect. And with that, we are ready to go on to the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here against Kha'Zix with some Celestia Blink. We just realized it's not Naya Blink. That's just because the deck said so. <laughs> All right, this looks great. We got the two into three into four curve. Keeping it. So hopefully the opponent's not something super hyper fast. But if it is, it's fine. We can deal with it. Got a good blocker into a good removal spell. 
Diothar, thank you so much for the tier one sub for seven months in a row. Welcome back and enjoy the emotes. We got two new emotes in the past week. So enjoy those. Uh, unfortunately, Yi is gone because our new lol emote is very similar to it. Blooming Marish. All right, Temple Garden tapped. Hey, Van the Sixth. Long time no see. You're too old to appreciate emotes. They confuse me. <laughs> there we go. 12's got the idea. All right, give me my wall of women's. Another Skyclave. Skyclave's going to be great here. Because um, since they're just like of the rock and they don't have like a lot of fetches, um, they won't be able to revolt push as easily. Um, I'm going to go wall plus mana dork here. I don't feel any need to Skyclave the, the, the blood gas unless it's part of like a combo. Like maybe they're like Eldritch Evolutioning or something. I'm not sure. Uh, let's get bird down there, I guess, because it can be an exalted attacker next turn if we need it to. I took an unnecessary pain, though, because I didn't know I was going to draw the branch off, which I should have just played that first. Uh, played the wall first before playing a land. Yeah, long time no see. Hope you've been well. Hey, Monty. It's 2 a.m. here and insomnia is kicking my butt. First time catching stream. Hello. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for coming out. I appreciate it. Hope you can get some sleep. I have been told. Wait, what did they do? Why is there stuff for power flyers? Oh, vampire nocturnus. I did not notice the nocturnus. Do I chump? I don't think so. Ooh, okay. This is going to be a full value of fem rate if we can get this to work. Eat that vampire nocturnus. And this is going to be so like, okay. So we talked about this in the intro of the video. Um, so what, what's going to happen is they're going to try to remove Skyclave and I'm going to blink it in response to the fem rate. Ephemerate is effectively going to be exile target, non-land permanent counter target spell. It's going to be stupid. So nuts. Soy nuts. And what's even crazier is that Ephemerate returns it immediately instead of at the end step. Ephemerate's such a powerful one drop. Because like when I made the video of top 10 modern cards in Modern Horizons, Ephemerate was on that list. It's just nuts. Twilight Prophet too. All right, well, we'll just Ephemerate our Skyclave and eat that Twilight Prophet. All right, we'll eat the Twilight Prophet. They're gonna get a dude. And then we're going to rebound. And we're gonna target our Skyclave, our Skyclave Apparition again. Oh, we can't hit illusions. Oh no. Uh oh, that's a problem. All right, well, I'm going to Flicker Wisp. And eat one of these. And then let's go Eternal Witness. And get back our Ephemerate. Then we can get back our Coco. I'm just gonna jump here. All right, Razor Verge Sprocket. We're just gonna hold up Coco plus Ephemerate. Let's get in with our Flicker Wisp here. I think we easily got this race. We got plenty of blockers, plenty of combat tricks. I think we definitely got this one. I seriously thought Skyclave could hit the illusion.
All right, let's Coco. Oh, that's a long message. I will read that momentarily. Give me a moment to do this play. All right, so let's declare blocks on Ewit. And then we're going to ephemerate our Ewit. And get back our Coco, and then proceed to get back our ephemerate. Oh, they're going to look for a removal spell. They need a push, exactly a push. Because I don't think they run main deck Assassin's Trophy Abrupt Decay. So they did find a push. So ephemerate fizzles. And I don't think it rebounds. I don't think it does. Yeah, it just goes away now. So that was good value. That was good. Another Flicker Wisp. All right, well, let's go with Flicker Wisp. And eat that illusion. And then I think I'm still just going to save the Skyclave Apparition for like another Nocturnus. So let's just draw a card for now. All right, Windswept Heath. Go to combat and let's attack with these dudes. All right, now we're tying it up. Fair game. All right, now time to read this long message. What game are you playing? Oh, we're playing Magic Online. Um, just want to make sure I understand. You per you prefer us not to refer you as Marin anymore. You can do it if you want. I mean, I prefer this new one, kind of. I mean, it's it's my Twitch username. It's my Sona name. But it's up it's up to you, really. I don't mind either. It's hard to keep up with this, and I admit, at the age 38, you feel a bit out of touch, like your wishes, in the same time. Uh, you can you can use whichever one you like. I don't mind either. Another Skyclave? Well, might as well use one. All right, eat the Bloodgast. Skyclave Apparition is so good. Attack for eight. Bringing them down to two. And then we should have it. I don't think they have any main deck sweepers in a creature-based deck. Why do they search for Tom? They really need to ramp that badly. Like, in search for Tom finds a... Oh, wait, it doesn't find a forest. It finds any basic land. I think that's an awkward spell in there. Like, you're a vampire aggro deck. Oh, oh I see. They're trying to get a ton of permanents on board. Because they want to activate... Um, what is it called? The City's Blessing on Twilight Prophet. So that's why. Okay. Sideboard against Vamps. Give me these Path Exiles. And, uh... Rest in Peace stops Blood Gas, but I'm not too worried about that. Aria Champion's a really good blocker. It's pro-black, and they're gonna have no way to remove it, and I'm just gonna gain life and block their, their dudes, but some of their dudes fly. Like, they're gonna have Vampire Nocturnus and, and um, you know, Twilight Prophet. I don't think it's worth... Because, like, they might also have Drana, too, and it just flies over. So I don't think I'm going to bring an Ariok Champion. So it's bringing the paths, and I think that the expendable cards in this deck are just walls. Let's cut um, one of each color wall. Um, yeah, that seems fine. Let's just run it like that. I could also run Knight just to gain life, but... I don't know. You know, I've... Okay, I'm going to keep Revelark because it's least It's a 4-3 flying blocker, so it can trade with the Nocturnus. Hey, Drew, how's it going? Good to see you again. That Skyclave is great. Wait, which one? Yeah, the Skyclave Apparition. It's been making waves in modern. It's been the Fiend Hunter effect that's finally good. It's about time we got a good Fiend Hunter effect. Guarantee you that at some point I'll mess it up and come out as maven moon or marin dragon or something it's fine either like i said either is fine um this hand is very awkward because it's slow but if i can successfully go splicer into resto without it getting disrupted then it should be pretty good 
I'm gonna try it because their deck doesn't seem all that aggressive. Like they are a, a tribal deck, but they don't seem like an aggressive tribal deck. Because they don't seem like a version that'd be playing Knight of the Ebon Legion. I'm not too worried. Skyclave targets a non-land non-token. That's why I didn't yeah. Why? They have ch oh see, with the search for Tom, they're even trying to get up to this Chancellor of the Dross. That's what they're doing. Okay, well, Noble Hierarch was the absolute best top deck there, so that's great. That makes us, like, three turns faster. All right, let's get out Blade Splicey. At work, I tell them I'm fine with Josh or Joshua, but I do judge people based off of choosing the wrong one. Oh, but, like, you said you're fine with either, so, like... That was all you. <laughs> they didn't do anything either. See, their deck is so clunky that they had no play until turn four. Are they going with the revolt push? All right. So the cool thing about having Resto and Coco is I can leave up the threat of either. Let's leave up Resto here. You get annoyed when people email, sign your, your email Joshua and come back with, Hey Josh. It's like, it's like, make up your mind, pick one. Um, all right. Look at the blade splicer. Are they scooping? Yeah, we just got too much aggression. Yeah, they're scooping. They, they had nothing to do because their deck has got too much four drops and like the seven drop chancellors. It's like... It's too clunky. If you're gonna play vampire aggro, I would recommend probably going mono black or black white, because you get some pretty decent stuff in black white, but otherwise mono black is totally fine. And go with like the aggro, you know, like two and one drops, like Knight of the Ebon Legion and stuff like that. And going with um, Soren, Soren Imperius Bloodlord, and you know, go that kind of route. I think that that's where vampires wants to be, not, not Golgari ramp. That's that's my take on that, but still, uh, props to you for for building this up. Pretty cool. Got a game here against Direwolf87, and we're going to be in the draw here with some green-white flicker. And this is very, very scary, because if Noble dies or gets thought seized, then we are screwed. But if it lives, we can wall to find our next land. I'm gonna try it, and if I get Thought Seized here, or if my Noble dies, I might just scoop. Okay, that's a good start. Basic Forest Go is a good start for our Noble living. And we drew our land, that's good. All the moms. The value is huge, but like, would you measure it in your moms? Like, one moms or like 75 moms? Um, this deck is probably like 0 .00001 moms because moms are are galactically large, so we could, nothing measures up to the size of your mom. All right, let's play Boulder Loft Pathway, and let's just Skyclave their Mana Dork to death. Eat that, be annoying. Elvish Arc Druid. We're gonna be even more annoying and just Skyclave it again. <laughs> Skyclave is so annoying. <laughs> this card, dude. And then we're just gonna flicker both of them and deal with anything they play. We're just nerfing their entire board into illusion tokens. It's stupid. <laughs> And then we, if we draw another land, we can even get a Chroma. Get a Chroma online. All right, I think I'm just gonna main phase Ephemerate again. Like I wanna go for a Chroma, but I don't think it's the time for it. Let's wall of bosom see if we hit our land drop. And we don't. All right, let's ephemerate on this one. 
and hit their uh, their Elvish clan caller. You can go ahead and have a 1 1 illusion token. Plays another Dwyden's Elite. And another Elvish Mystic. All right, they're passing. I'm going to get my Ephemerate back again. And bounce this Scourge of the Sky, or this uh, Skyclave Apparition. And eat a Dwyden's Elite. Let them get a 2 2. There's a Blade Splicer. All right, um. I think let's play a Blade Splicer. Like, I need to get some good blockers down. All right, it's currently a board stall now. Whoever gets the value first wins. Like, if they get their Azuri, it's a little bit spooky because I, I need mana. Oh, they got their Azuri. All right, well, maybe we got baited. They are a little bit short of activating Azuri, so they, they can't really attack yet. But I'm going to need to find another Flicker ability quick. Okay, there's my land. Perfect. So crack it. And I'm going to have to main phase Coco here. To look for either another Skyclave Apparition or a Flicker Wisp. There's a Flicker Wisp. And we're going to get a Noble because we need mana. With the rest on the bottom, we are going to Flicker our skyclave apparition wait does this one have anything under it it does all right look at the skyclave apparition they go ahead and get a 2-2 illusion and then we go to the end step get our skyclave back eat azuri be annoying <laughs> how many things have our skyclaves eaten I think four things. And they are in top deck mode and they got nothing. I can start swinging in the air with the Flicker Wisp now. All right. Um, I think let's just go Revelark to make the clock go a little bit quicker before they find something to do. And get in there in the sky with uh, Flicker Wisp. Always yield. And we're in there for four. The ghosts enjoy war. I mean... Is that... What? They possess people, but I don't think so. I don't think possessing is the same way. Possessing is totally different. They found a Coco at the top. They get Elvish Arcturid and Imperius Perfect. That was a really good top deck. Now I assume they're alpha. I assume they're going to alpha right now. Yeah, they are going to alpha. I can live. All right, let's block the biggest dude here. We're going to eat a 3-3 three, three here. And then we're going to block one of these and chump one of these. And then eat a 1-1. One, one. Um, I mean, yeah, we still live. So that's fine. Oh, you know what? I should have let both of my Skyclave Apparitions die so that I can get them back immediately. That would have been hilarious. That would have been so good. Oh, I wish I could take it back, dude. I really wish I could take that back. That would have been hilarious. That would 
That would have been so good. I should have done that. All right, fetch. Temple Garden. Play a wall. Play an Ewit. We're going to get back Ephemerate. Play a Razor Verge Thicket. And... Oh, you know what we're going to do? Oh, this is, good. this is a good combat trick. We're going to attack with Skyclave and Skyclave. And Flicker Wisp. Yeah, this is a really good combat trick. Do I even attack with the Golems? Do I attack with one Golem? Let's attack with one. Wait, two, four, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I have to swing because that's lethal. So I'm forcing them to block something. Dude, yes. Baited. Absolutely baited. So now I ephemerate and I flicker this one. They got so jabated, man. And let's eat the Elvish Arc Druid. And now the Imperius Perfect shrinks and trades. And they lose both of their lords. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Absolutely baited. Now they're at three. They're dead in the air to the Flicker Whist. And all I have to do is live here. I can do that. They didn't see that bait a mile away? Dude, you saw me Ewit back the Ephemerate. You should have known that was going to happen. <laughs> Nettle Sentinel? Sure. <laughs> going to build around the Rev? The, wait, the Rev from Avenge Sevenfold? Now we Ephemerate, and we blink... Ewit, I guess, and get back our Scourge of the, or get back our Skyclave Apparition. Which we should have gotten back Ephemerate, but still. Go to combat, they're empty handed, so let's just go and attack with Flicker Wisp. Uh, no. The Revel Arc? No. I don't think it's a very good card. I mean, it, it reads good, but does it play good? Um, usually never does. I, I never see it do awesome things, but it could have been amazing there if I just traded off my, my Skyclave Apparitions, let them die, and then the, Re the Rev would die, and I would get back both of the Skyclaves and eat both of their Lords, and then I would proceed to blink both of the Skyclaves again. <laughs> It would have been so good. All right, so against the elves. Eidolon of Rhetoric's good, but on the draw, not as much. I, I want Path for sure. Give me that. And I think a Chroma's probably just too slow. And a Revelark's probably just too slow. I like the rest of the stuff, so let's just keep the rest of it. Even though you can technically blink the uh, the Acroma to like make it a big blocker, I think it just might not happen. All right, Mulligan the Zero Lander. Keep that one, and I think we're gonna toss um, Wall. So we're just gonna like turn to Skyclave something, and then Path, and then Ewit get back Path. So. Shaper Sanctuary is going to make it really difficult. I'm going to need to Skyclave that first. Because I think they forget. Scourge of the Skyclave, or Skyclave Apparition, doesn't only hit creatures. It hits non-land permanents. That's how busted this thing is. It's insane. Absolutely crazy. I wish they'd make a promo. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this art, though. This art's totally fine. 
That's rare that I say that. But it's easy on the eyes. So we're eating the shapers. Imperious Perfect, sure. I'm going to exile the Imperious Perfect right now because I don't want them to get any value off of it when they untap and get a token. I'm giving them more mana to work with, but at least they're not getting a creature. Another Skyclave Apparition, I'm fine with that. Getting there for three. The CMC is really high and the Evoke is one higher. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really clunky card. Revel Arc. All right. Two Lords. All right, well, Skyclave Apparition number two. Let's eat the Clan Caller because, again, I don't want it to get any value. Like, the Arc Druid ramps a bunch, but at least it doesn't generate any particular value. Let's get in there with the Sky Clay for three. They're down to 14. They're going to be so salty that I drew triple Sky Clay. <laughs> and then I still got Ewit getting back path as another one. And then Resto to blink the Sky Clay again for another one. Dude, stop getting Lords. They're all Lords Elves currently. I'm going to chump. I don't need this wall. I really don't. All right, well, it's Scourge of the Sky oh, Skyclave Apparition again. Eat their clan caller. Go to combat. Attack for three. See if they would like to trade. They probably won't. Yeah, they're they're probably playing the Oops All Lords deck that we played. Um, let me check and let me check the chat and see if they are chatting. Oh, G G E L H F. All right, we're gonna take nine. We're getting dangerously low here. Oh, you know what? I should have double blocked the Lord there. That was dumb on my part. Um, if I were them, I would have made a 3-3 token with Imperious Perfect. Okay, do I go for a, a wall to try to hit my next land and be a blocker? Or do I go Blade Splicer? I think Blade Splicer, because it, it provides a better blocker. 3-3 three, three first striker can be pretty annoying to them unless they hit another lord off the top. Alright, pass a turn. Once I hit my fourth land, we're in business. Because I can, like, resto, get another skyclave trigger. I can e wait back the... Oh, they did top a lord. So lucky, dude. Alright, I'm gonna do some double blocking action right here. I might even have to chump. And they finally choose to make a 4-4 token. It's in their best interest to just swing out here, I think. Alright, block here, block here. And... Just chump on this one. Please, dude, give me the land. Oh my goodness. This was such an easy game. It was such an easy game, dude. It was such an easy match. Okay, we're dead. Just couldn't hit the mana to save my life.
Hey, JJ. Hugs. Good to see you again. We're going to submit right back. We're on the play this time. So I was considering not using green screen anymore. I was considering getting some acoustic panels and some LED lights and putting them behind me on this wall and trying that out. I would need a high aperture lens probably, but I can try, try to make do with the lens I got. Uh, this hand's fine. It doesn't have any removal, but it's got mana and things to do. All right, shock, noble, go. You showed up and you got mana screwed. No, no, we we got mana screwed far before you came in here. Perfect timing. Skyclave to the rescue. And yes, I'm going to hit their turn one play and not the Lord they play. I think that slowing them down is the most important thing. We can find ways to deal with the Lords later. If we can slow them down from getting out of turn two Lord, that's what could save us. Biden's elite for no value. I like it. And they only got four cards left. Another sky click. I'm going to save it. I, I don't value hitting a Dwinan's Elite here. Um, so let's just go for a wall to try to hit our land drop and then just play a bird. Didn't hit our land drop, but it gets us ever closer to hitting one. Let's get in there for three. Don't do this again, deck. No more mana screw. They're going to chump block. That is a fine chump block. To save three damage when you're at 20? Uh, that's questionable. I think they just forgot that we got exalted. Imperius perfect. That I will gladly skyclave. Skyclaves are so annoying. Getting there for three. I was like exalting, exalting with this noble all the past two games. Like it, they surely that wasn't a misclick or a misplay. I think that was like intended. Um. All right. I think I'm going to offer the trade here the double block because i am totally okay with this double block if they want to do that they're taking it all right let's flicker wisp on our skyclave apparition they get a token go to the end step get it back and eat their lord again it's obnoxious. I keep saying it every time. Yeah, Dwine is a turn two play. They're suffering. I mean, I would do that if I had nothing else to do. Another Imperius Perfect. Adorable. I mean, they might actually keep this one if I whiff. Um, Alright, let's go to combat. Attack with Flicker Wisp for four. They take it. Let's Coco to see if we can hit a Flicker Wisp or another Skyclave Apparition. We do hit another Skyclave Apparition. Eat the Lord. <laughs> They're probably so mad right now. They're probably so mad. I feel bad for doing this. Another Lord. <laughs> okay, now I'm, I said it last time, but they might actually keep this one. Let's go for a Wall of Bosoms. See if we can hit another Flicker Whisper, another Skyclave. Coco. Alright, let's go to combat. 
Tackle and Flicker Whisk, Golem. And that's it. Probably gonna chump the they don't even chump the golem, but they chump the 3-3 when they were at 20. This makes zero sense. Alright, they're down to four. Fetch. Grab a basic forest. An Ewit. Get back Coco. I think they're giving us the GGs. I didn't get to see chat on time. I didn't get to see chat. If you said GG and you're watching this on YouTube, GG, taking down elves. That second match was like, I was so disappointed at the mana screw. That was going to be a molly whopping, but we took it back and did what we were supposed to in game three. Despite we did get a little bit mana screwed, but at least we got the mana dorks on time. And man, that was a really great showing for the annoyance that Skyclave Apparition can be against a creature-based deck that has limited removal. So I can imagine that this deck has a pretty decent time against humans, because humans is obnoxious. But when you take their one-drop 8-8s and champions and stuff and nerf them into 1-1 one -one tokens after they somehow deal with this, it can be amazing. I mean, meddling mages can be obnoxious too, but then we can cocoa around it and deal with them. So, yeah, awesome showing right there. Got a game here against Stack Vortex, and we won the die roll. Going to be in the play here with some uh, Celestia Blink, and that looks good. Well, somebody highlighted a message earlier. Going to see what it was. Thoughts on Penny Dreadful as a format? Um, I think it sounds like a lot of fun, but it's just something that a lot of people will not do. And I think that its rotate potential, if it was popular, is way too high. So imagine you have a format where there's a $10 deck building limit and everyone's like, say it was really popular. There's going to be a deck that eventually becomes the most popular that the cards in it go up in price and then it's no longer going to be a legal deck and then you're going to have to build a new one. So the, the problem with that format is that it won't have a meta and me being a brewer, that seems like it'd be a good thing, but still for a healthy format, it has to have its meta and... That format, once a deck gets popular, it's instantly going to be out of the price range, and then just you'll have to move on right to another one. So it's like every week there's going to be a new top deck. And it's going to be a lot of frust uh, frustrating for a lot of tier players, a lot of spikes. So it's more of a kitchen table format, I think. Um. All right, we're going to go... Let's just start getting the aggression out there. Go Flicker Wisp. Even though their deck's probably going to have a lot of, um, their deck's probably going to have a lot of, uh, ooh, Coco, a lot of sweepers. So, uh, mono black treasure map. We, we played against this deck a long time ago. It had like solemn simulacrums. It was like mono black ramp basically into like Ugin. It was kind of like Tronless Tron. Field of Ruin is fine. I actually didn't even want to have can't be painting me there because you know, it was painful. And they're going to push the Flicker Wisp. I don't think you should be running Flicker Wisp in a monocolored deck. I really think that you should be opting for Blood Chief or Blood Chief's Thirst or whatever that new card is. Um, I want some ramp, so let's just go Noble plus Flicker Wisp. And the funny thing about that treasure map is that once it gets to like two counters on it, I can just flicker wisp it and reset it. It's kind of funny. Mardu Vampires is your pet deck. Yeah, you get a lot of goodies in Mardu as well, but Golgari is not the color for vampires. You're building Black White Stoneblade. Just picked up the Skyclaves today. Black White Stone Blade, in my opinion, is one of like the top three strongest, just solid core decks like in, in modern. It's just got everything you need. Um, all right. Let's go to combat. Actually, do I Coco first? Do I Coco now so I can try to get more noble hierarchs to get more exalted? I don't know. I could just like slam Revel Arc. 
All right, let's just cast Rebel Arc. I have nothing for Rebel Arc to return though, unfortunately. I have so much value though. That's what like blink decks do is they just generate infinite value. Like I have stuff to do for days. The rotation happens every 10 or so weeks and the decks themselves are on, TG on MTG are like a dollar MTGO. Yeah, see there's the, there's one of the many sweepers I talked about. Wall of Bosoms and, and Noble, get them right back, draw another card. Um, all right, let's go with Wall of Bosoms, and then Razor Verge Thicket, and go, and we'll just Coco. Okay, um, in response, let's Coco and see if we can get a Flicker Wisp to reset that treasure map so it doesn't flip. Because we don't want them ramping into an Ugin. Yep, there's a Flicker Wisp and there is a Wall of Omens. You ain't flipping that treasure map today. Do they have another sweeper? I assume they do. This deck has a lot of sweepers. Liliana the Dank Realm's probably gonna go tutor for yeah, they're they're gonna go search for a swamp, actually. This isn't the tutor lily, this is the swamp lily. Because it is mono black ramp after all. Thought is gonna take our other cocoa, probably. Yep, they take our cocoa. Once I find an E-Wit, it's all coming back. Oh, speaking of which, ask and you shall receive. All right, E-Wit's going to get back Coco. And go to combat, swing at Liliana. Has a turn. Your complaint about Black White Stoneblade is it is an eight rack. I mean that's valid. There there are some people that are just so religious with their deck choices. Like they're they play eight rack for life. They play Tron for life. They play Storm for life, and they never stray away from that path. So if, if 8-Rack is your specialty and you don't feel comfortable playing anything else, then just play 8-Rack. Because I know, like, the, the world's best Lantern Control player, and he plays it religiously. Like, only that and nothing else. All right, we're going to go Resto here. We're going to bounce Ewit. We're going to get back Revel Arc. Just to buy back a lot of stuff in the case of another sweeper. Okay, play Branch Loft Pathway. And then let's go to... Um... One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So I have enough for Revel Arc plus Coco. Do you want to find a way to... I mean, probably not. Do I trade off my E-Way? I don't think so. Let's just get in with the Flyers. Yeah, get in there. And then I'm going to cast Revel Arc so that I have Lethal in the air for next turn, forcing them to make a move. And I'm just going to pass. Because if they do sweep the board, at least Revel Arc's going to buy back a couple things. A couple walls to draw me more cards. 
But I feel like they're for sure sweeping here. There's no way they're not. Yeah, there's the Ugin that we talked about. And here comes the minus five. Now I have to get a... Um... Yeah, I have to get a flyer. I have to get a flicker wisp off of this um, Coco. My last one, there's only four. I got three of them so far. I gotta get my last one here to be able to kill that Ugin or else we're screwed. Oh, Skyclave, perfect. That works. And then an Ewit too, to get back in it. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Eat that Solemn and get back Coco. That was perfect. I feel like maybe I should have got back Flickerwist. I'm not sure. Because then I could have flickered the e weight and gotten back another Flickerwist and then done it again. All right, go to combat. Hit Ugin. Hit them. Um, let's go with a Wall of Bosoms. Play Razor Rich Thicket and pass. That was great. Now we can kind of have a good chance of getting lethal here. They're not flipping their thing yet. They don't have enough for another Ugin unless they drop a land. Do they have exactly land Ugin? No, but they got something big. Another Solemn. Sure. I have an Orzov. Oh, hey. Oh, wait, that was Nate. Oh, hey, Nate. How's it going? I have an Orzov 8-rack list with your name on it. If you take another donation, you have an agreement with my wife of only $50 a month on Patreon subscriptions, and I'm already maxed out. That's fair. Yeah, I, I do donation decks. I have that thing on my Patreon. The, the um, I mean, I, it feels so weird putting a price on it, but, you know, content is... um. You know, it takes it takes a lot of time. It does take a lot of time. So yeah, I, if if you're down, I'm down. All right, we're gonna go Skyclave Apparition and another Ewit. The same Cocoa Path, the same Cocoa Pile as last turn, and we're gonna get back Flicker Wisp this time, so we can Flicker Ewit. But yeah, we we should have it here. They, I don't think they have any way to instant speed kill all of my creatures so yeah i think i think this one should be in the bag since we have the mana might as well crack this canopy this deck is just infinite value it's insane Oh yeah, totally. Okay, well, that actually saves them. That does actually save them. And they're gonna block my other Skyclave. Yeah, but they're dead. Because Swift Dead made them take two damage. Yeah, so it didn't save them, but it was close and annoying. <laughs> Hey, Crested Shark. If anybody um, directly asked me a question, feel free to repeat it if I didn't see it because there's a lot of messages in the chat and I try to read them all, but I'm also trying to play the game at the same time. So if anybody asked me something, just feel free to repeat it if I didn't answer it. All right, so Night of Autumn seems good here. They have a lot of artifacts. I'd be cool with blowing up a Mind Stone or something, or a treasure map. Um, Aria Champion is pro-black, and they are mono-black, but then again, they have a lot of colorless stuff. Um, so yeah, probably just Night of Autumn. And realistically, Kozilek might be legit to hardcast here. It's only 10 mana, and this game is going to go really long. Like, I could see it. But it's too cute, so let's just cut, um, 
Just a couple walls. And run it like that. I'm okay with Skyclave Apparition. Because, again, we can eat rocks. We can eat treasure maps and solemns and stuff like that. Your deck religion is anything that runs Young Power Mancer. Mine is anything that runs Mana Dorks and Path. Um, I think this hand is probably acceptable. I have the Acroma combo in hand. I'm going to keep it. I only got two lands, but I'm hoping the wall draws me into another. So let's try it because I'm going to morph the Acroma on turn three and I got the Ephemerate for it. Oh, they're going to Thought Seize me. Well... There goes Wall. Probably gonna take Ephemerate, honestly. Or one of my Cocos. They take the Acroma. They're scared of the Acroma. Is Acroma pro black? It's pro white and blue. Alright, one swept teeth, crack it for a Temple Garden, tapped and pass. How's it going, Poxro Mana? Two mana, Mind Stone. Mind Freak. I used to watch Chris Angel. I was a big fan of Chris Angel back in the day when he had that TV show. But then he became like some Vegas somebody. And then he became a meme. Thoughtseize again. Probably taking Ephemerate or Blade Splicer because it's my next turn play. I, I imagine a Coco. They take Blade Splicer because it's my next turn play. All right, I'm saving this Ephemerate for later. Hey, Nate. Second Nate of the stream. There's two Nates in here now. Duckies. I actually ordered another ducky. So an another ducky is on the way. We're here to party. It's a Nate party. Monty, why do you have your social security number in your username? They have two Mind Stones. All right, well, even though they can sweep us here. Okay, they, they can't afford an Ugin next turn, right? They can't. And I think they run Karn Liberated. I'm not super sure. Karn Lubricated. Um, I could Coco now to try to hit double Skyclave Apparition to, like, hit both of their Mind Stones. I think I'm just going to wait. Because, like, if I Coco main phase, I'm just going to run into a sleeper. Hey, mana cost. Welcome, welcome. Coco double night of autumn, easy. Oh, they're cracking that thing. I'm so tempted. Oh, I shouldn't have attacked with Noble because I could have left up Ephemerate. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking. All right, I'm just going to let it go. These, these things cross my mind when I'm reading chat and I like forget everything that I'm going to do. All right, end step, Coco. Um, all right, we're going to get Ewit to get back the Coco. And then, oh, you know what? Acroma does not have haste, but I can uh, morph Acroma and Ephemerator. So let's go Ewit and Flicker Wisp, I think. And Ewit's gonna get back Coco. Oh, 
Oh, you know what? I should have went a chroma because Ewit doesn't come back until my end step, so I won't get a chroma down. Um. Go canopy just in case I want to crack it. Get in there, flicker wisp. All right, Ewit's getting back a chroma. I love when a when a green white creature based deck can play at instant speed. It just feels so good. I don't think I'd have the fortitude to stream chat and play MTGO at the same time. I know, right? That's the problem. Um, okay, do I want to ephemerate right now? Do I want to ephemerate? I can flicker Ewit, get back the blade splicer. And then on my upkeep before ephemerate. Oh, but I, I can't. Wait. Yeah, I can't ephemerate in response to the rebound trigger. And then I can Coco to get something to flicker. Okay, let's do that. Let's ephemerate. Oh, wait. I can ephemerate my flicker wisp. Oh, no, 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 no. That doesn't make sense. Ephemerate the Ewit. Get back the blade splicer. Say yes. L uh, tap noble for mana. Let this go. Coco. Get. I kind of want to get Skyclave Apparition to like eat their things. Okay, let's get Skyclave Apparition and Ewit. Eat their treasure map. And Ewit's getting back Coco. Which it should have gotten back Flicker Wisp. All right, so now at my upkeep, rebound ephemerate, targeting Ewit, and Ewit's gonna get back Ewit. Play a branch loft pathway. Let's morph a chroma. And play an Ewit. And let's get back Ephemerate. There's too much value, it never ends. You cannot outvalue this, it's impossible. It's just infinite value forever. Because Ewits loop each other, and then the bounce spell, and then flicker the Ewit, and you just literally get back everything from your graveyard, it's insane. Do they have another sweeper? They're cracking their mind stone desperation mode. Are they gonna eat my horizon canopy? All right, they kill our skyclave with the feed the swarm, and they lose two life for doing that. Or they live, they lose three life for doing that. They get a blocker, which I'm just gonna deal with. Um, all right, let's go to combat and attack with all. All right, they're going to block there. I'm going to ephemerate there. They go down to two. And shock here. Play a wall of bosoms and pass. All right. You got to deal with our board now, opponent. You don't have enough for Ugin either. Torrent 
Torment of Hailfire is totally fine. I'm gonna Coco to see if I can get like a Blade Splicer, get more bodies on board or something. And I can get a Flicker Wisp. All right, so let's get Flicker Wisp and birds. And we're going to Flicker their illusion. And I will sacrifice bird, wall, yeah, we got it. I just sacrificed four things and then I just attack back for lethal. And we're taking down Mono Black Ramp. That's a really cool deck. I think it can be built in better ways, but I don't think it can get it any better than what they're like doing. Like treasure map is a little bit awkward. I understand it's a ramp piece, but I would just go with more rocks, like talisman S, kind of like Mindstone rocks. Uh, the Solemn is perfect for that deck, and then Rampant Ugin. It's basically mono black Tronless Tron that's trying to just torment of Hailfire for a million. I mean, if you're doing that, you might as well just play mono black Tron, right? Might as well just put in the Tron lands and Expedition map, and uh, then you can have like some other black tutor to find a, a land. Like, Grim Tutor is legal now, but I, I mean, it's a really janky tutor. There's also that big lily that fetches things, but yeah, like, no point in just running Tron in there. So GG to them, it's a cool deck. Hello everybody, welcome to the speed up session for today's video. As you know, we like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you wanna catch the full games unsped up, unedited and uncut for the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there from last Monday. We are speeding up the next two games today. I don't believe there's any cut from the video. Speeding up the next two, these ones were super long. Every single game, was very long with blink and i told you in the intro that it was going to be that way because i swear every single time we've ever gone up against bant soul herder blink those mashes literally take like an hour because those decks can be annoying but they don't kill very fast so you kind of just sit there and grind it out until they slowly but surely bleed you out in a way, it takes longer to fight those decks than it does to fight blue-white control. It doesn't seem like it on the surface, but it is. All right. So we're going up against Ad Nauseam. Immediately what I said is we have no particular way to beat Ad Nauseam. This deck has very, very minimal combo interactions. So I knew this was a terrible matchup from the start. And what do you know, game one, they just comboed off super quick because we literally had no way to interact. Like, we only interact against, like, mid-range creature decks. Game two, we brought in Eidolon of Rhetoric, so they can only cast one spell. We played it at the right time, and they couldn't combo off and scooped it up. Game three is a little more grindy, because I'm scared they're going to have a bunch of answers for these things, and they do in the form of Echoing Truth. I just got to make sure to keep one Eidolon back, so if they like disenchant the first one or whatever, I'll be able to play the second one. Now, the opponent screwed up right there. They punted, because they... Echoing Truth are Eidolon on combat. They allowed me to have a second main phase so I can replay it again. So they completely screwed up because I think what they wanted to do is bounce it, untap, and combo off. But even if they did do that correctly, they didn't have enough mana to combo off. So I don't know what they're trying to go for. So I was completely playing safe with these Eidolons the whole entire time, making sure that I would always have one on board. So I really, like, I still stand by the fact that I think that this is a bad matchup. I just think that we got super lucky. I was like also hardcore playing around like um, Settle the Wreckage. I knew they were going to have like Bonchos Last Reckoning and stuff, but I didn't mind because I knew that I was just going to be able to Eternal Witness the Eidolon back and replay it again. Um, and they were such a low life total that a second Bonchos Reckoning wouldn't matter. They don't get to untap their lands. I'd be able to get lethal. So it's a miracle that we happen to take now down Ozium. Like I said, I still think it's a bad matchup, and I really think that this deck needs to be more prepared for combo decks, like put more combo hate in the sideboard, because with this deck's grind value, you can grind out against most other fair things. You just got to prepare for the unfair things. So we're going on to the last game in the video. We're on the verge of a 5-0 here, and we're going up against the old top-tier green white titan deck however they do have a, a sacred foundry and i don't know what that's for uh i don't know i i wasn't even watching what happened there i think we got game one because i didn't see a titan or anything going on like that but um yeah the green white titan deck i really don't know what the red splash is for i've never seen this deck splash red before because obviously it's not for blood moon because that would hurt their deck a lot 
so it's arboreal grazer variant this is weird seeing arboreal grazer in this deck because we know it's not amulet titan it's just the celestia just value town titan and usually only the the amulet of vigor variants play arboreal grazer due to the fact that you know you can like get in the turn one tap or bounce lands or whatever or just like get an extra bounce lands on a turn when you're trying to produce a lot of mana so it really helps for those kinds of situations so game number two it looks like we ended up getting so it looks like we lost game one game number two um oh yeah i remember game one we were just like oh we have no way to deal with the titan once it's out there it's just it's it's getting its value basically if they ever resolve a titan we are going to lose because we have no counter spells and we have no land destruction so if they get the the field of the dead online we have no way to beat that and we're not going to be able to flicker enough things with flicker west to be able to kill all the zombies and they're going to overwhelm luckily they're getting a very awkward hand here that doesn't really have much but eventually they find a bunch of field of the deads via elvish reclaimer and i can't deal with the elvish reclaimer because i do not find a single uh, skyclave apparition and i'm so lucky they didn't find a dried of Lysian grove either but yeah the skyclave grabbing the field of the dead is gonna do it i can't deal with all the zombies so i just end up scooping it up so we didn't snag the 5-0 but we came super close so we ended up with four total wins and we almost got the 5-0 this deck ended up performing so much better than i thought it would like it was amazing it was endless value but at the end of the day I can't speak. At the end of the day, there is some things that I would change about it. Uh, so I I do think we got mana screwed more than we should have. And like people always play so much less mana than I personally do when I brew decks. I, I like to go more mana heavy. So this deck has six mana dorks and 21 lands. I would definitely up it one in one and go seven mana dorks, 22 lands. Or stick to six mana dorks but go 23 lands like i would at least go up two more sources of mana that's what i would do first and foremost second of all i would in some way somewhere add at least one copy of gavany township at least one because green white creature based decks could really it does not get hurt by running a singleton gavany and it really helps the late game grind so i would add that and then last of all, my one my one complaint is that this deck has not enough ways to interact with combo. Now, the sideboard does seem pretty tight. Paths seem awkward because they're usually a main deck kind of card. But seeing as how you have Skyclave and so many ways to blink it, maybe you don't need the paths. Um, I do like them, but maybe you can find a way to just slot a singleton in the main deck at least and then just cut the one from the board and run more ways okay so eidolon should have been archon of Amiria, the new card from zeneca rising that does the exact same thing as eidolon it's in bolt range and eidolon isn't maybe that's the reason that they ran it or maybe they just didn't know but archon of Amiria also has more like implications he makes their non-lands or non-basic lands enter tapped so it can be really good against the lands based decks like titan and that's another thing that I wanted to mention is that this deck does not have enough ways to deal with the Titan decks. They, it, like, the Titan decks will walk all over this. And so that, that's another complaint I have. So I, I was thinking, maybe find a way to add two or three acidic slimes somewhere. I know that Revel Arc, like, it has some use. I would just rather run acidic slime over it and then probably find a way to add a couple more slimes in the board. So when you're going up against those land-based Field of the Dead Valakut Titan decks, you have ways to disrupt them. And if you continually blink the acidic slime, then you could deal with a lot more things. Like you could deal with them. Um, like you can even bring acidic slime into the slow matchups where your removal does nothing. Like example, like we went up against that Ad Nauseam deck and I would have definitely brought an acidic slime against that, blowing up their mana and then continually blinking the slime and blowing up more lands every turn, and they're really not going to interact with us. That would have been just totally game breaking. Like, and even blowing up, like, because it hits like a non creature permanent, so it can like deal with so much. And we went up against that mono black ramp deck, it would have been awesome against them blowing up their lands because they're trying to ramp it. If we deny their mana, that's a good thing. So, acidic slime would be awesome. That's all I can say. 
And I guess that's everything I have to say. I know Ariok Champion is great against the Shadow like kind of burn decks, but this deck, it's like the mana base is not too painful. And it has good blockers. It's got Skyclave and, and Path. Like it, it has a lot of ways to deal with like the shadow kind of decks. Like so you don't need to go so heavy on Ariok. So you can cut down to maybe three, maybe even two, and just make some room. Um, so yeah. I guess that's that's all my input on it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button down below. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this deck. And go check out the social media. The Twitter link is down below, as well as the link to Twitch. If you want to catch one of these live streams, we stream our Magic the Gathering gameplay all day long on Mondays. And we stream variety through the rest of the week, Tuesday through Friday, if you want to come out and see some other games. And if you'd like to try today's deck out for yourself, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code MarinMoon to save 15% off and you can rent today's deck and play along with us. They're the most trusted and reliable Magic Online card rental service. It is what I personally use and how I'm able to stream so much like this. And um, what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought there. Oh yeah. If you want to try today's deck out on paper, consider purchasing through our deck list link down below. That's our TCG player link and anything you purchase through there really helps out the channel. It is the number one place on the internet to buy Magic the Gathering singles. And shout out to all of our supporters over on Patreon. You know, I might even make a new Patreon outro, like probably starting this video, like really soon. You might even see it coming up in a second right here, but I will say this outro anyways, just in case I don't get around to that or if I forget. But thank you so much to all of our patrons for making this channel possible. I really appreciate your support. And if you would like to become a patron as well and support the channel further, the Patreon link is down below in the description. All right, I'm gonna get on out here, you guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Mm -hmm.